Mars. I'm going to start off with a question today for you. Is the Pope Catholic? Well, that may seem a facetious a question. It seems to state the obvious, doesn't it? And you know, since I was just a little child, I've heard that cliche. When you ask a person something that's obvious, his response or her response might be, well, is the Pope Catholic? Meaning, well, of course. Silly? <laughs> well, friends, don't be too hasty, though, about answering the real question, is the Pope Catholic? What if, for example, the Catholic Pope, the Pope who heads up the Roman Catholic Church, one billion members strong throughout this world, a man who is fabulously <laughs> admired, in fact, he has been ranked at the very top of the world's most admired men list for decades now. What if that Pope, the Pope of the Vatican, is not Catholic? <laughs> is it possible? Uh, could it indeed have already transpired? Is it already the case today that the Pope is not only not Christian, but he's not even Catholic? Well, it does boggle the imagination, but I want you to consider some things. The Pope, as you're going to see, has already taken the mark of Shiva, the Hindu god, in his forehead. He has put a statue, or allowed a statue to be placed, on a Catholic altar of a major Catholic church. And they worshipped a Buddhist uh, ritual inside that church. This Pope has embraced evangelist Billy Graham and all of the top Protestant celebrities he has welcomed Muslim potentates and kings. He has romanced the, the chief rabbi of Israel. This pontiff has passionately, yes, kissed the breast of Mother Earth. He's even so-called, uh, to, to use the word joyously, he's joyously attended a Bob Dylan rock music concert. So I ask you, is the claim that the Pope is the world's greatest religious leader, and that claim has been made by people ranging from Jerry Falwell to Billy Graham, believe it or not, is that simply an elaborate hoax? 
he may indeed be the world's greatest religious leader, but is it true that he is the world's greatest Christian leader? Might it be said that he is not even Catholic? Well, in this hour, we're going to examine that very question. We're, yes, we're going to look at the Pope's incredible popularity. He is the most traveled Pope in history. People throng to him everywhere he goes, Protestants, Catholics, Jews, Muslims, Buddhists, and so on. We will see that the Pope actually endorses these false religions and has told people of the world that they do not have to accept Jesus in this lifetime directly. They do not have to accept the gospel in this Holy Bible to be saved. We will look at the Catholic uh, catechism, the new catechism that has been published by this Pope, and we will answer a very important question. In addition to letting you, my friend, decide for yourself after you've seen this astonishing evidence, you will be able to decide whether the Pope is indeed Catholic. But you will also be able to answer this very intriguing and remarkable inquiry and question. Does all of what you're going to see now signal the return of ancient Babylon, the mystery religion? Have the ancient gods returned? And will the Pope of Rome end up the great Holy Father, so to speak, of all the religions of planet Earth? I want to begin with you, my friend, in this great book, the Holy Bible, in the book of Revelation. We will see something very fascinating. First, we turn to Revelation 13, verse 1, and I read from the Word of God, and I stood upon the sand of the sea. This is the Apostle John in the vision given to him. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. My friends, this great beast that rises up out of the sea in the last days has upon his head the names, or heads, plural, the names of blasphemy. I believe those names are the names of the false gods and goddesses, the names of the false religions of this earth. Those who have despised Jesus, have rejected Jesus Christ, and who instead worship the devil in so many varieties of forms. Then we turn to Revelation 17. There we see one of the angels uh, again speaking to the Apostle John. And John says, so he, the angel, carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-covered beast, or colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, Remember that, because those are the colors of Rome and its cardinals of the Pope. And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. They certainly have that in the Catholic Church, great riches. Having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. My friend, here we see again the blasphemous abominations of this great worldwide church of mystery Babylon. That is the worldwide ecumenical merged together church of the devil, an amalgamation, a consolidation of all the false faiths on this planet in the last days. And there is a leader of this consolidated, incredible, New Age, world religious system. This leader is called Mystery Babylon, but she, or it, is the mother of harlots. You see, she's not just one harlot. She has mothered many, many other whores and harlots. This is a system of harlotry throughout the earth. Again, we have the names of blasphemy. Now we have the daughters of the whore spread throughout the earth in the last days, all brought together under the umbrella of mystery, Babylon the Great, 
the mother of harlots, and the beast with the names of blasphemy on her or its heads. Now we come to the Pope. And as we look at the Pope, I want you to understand something. The Pope is greatly admired. He has been called the world's greatest religious leader. And throngs of people greet him everywhere he goes as he drives around in what has been called the Pope Mobile. And as he gives speeches, he's been all over the world. This is the most traveled Pope in human history. And you know, I found it very fascinating to look. I have, uh, for example, seen a special on television, a biography special on the A&E channel on cable TV. Very favorable to the Pope. Just recently, I came across this ad for a public broadcasting system program. It's the, from Frontline, John Paul II, the Millennial Pope. The Millennial Pope. And by the way, they sure threw some softballs at the Pope uh, in this particular special, which I saw, and it was very favorable to the Pope. In fact, all of the media seemed to admire and love this Pope. Here, for example, is U.S. News and the World Report, and there we see the, the Pope in a very prayerful uh, uh, stance. He's holding up what is the cross or the crucifix, and he appears to be praying, and it says, the struggles of John Paul II. Oh, he's struggling and suffering for us all. Now, this Pope has come to the United States. Of course, he's been to Paris. He's been to, to naturally, to Rome, but he's been to other places other than the Vatican uh, in Rome. He's been to Africa. He's been uh, uh, down uh, into, uh, goodness, I, I can't even think of all the countries, in Togo, Fiji, New Zealand, Norway. It goes on and on. Let me give you some evidence of how beloved this Pope is and how he has brought the whole world together in its admiration for him. This is from the Modesto B newspaper out of California. Pope opens youth rendezvous four days in Paris. There you see the Pope, by the way, at this meeting with what can only be called an idol, a statue of Mary. But look at the idol nature of it standing right next to him. Here we have the Austin American Statesman from Austin, Texas, the major daily newspaper there. When the Pope went down to Mexico, visited Mexico City, and all of the uh, officials were there, the president of Mexico, the mayor of Mexico City, here he is, they always show him with children. Of course, they showed Adolf Hitler with children, and Mussolini, and Joseph Stalin as well, and the Bill Clinton likes to, you know, do it all for the children, including kill the children in Waco. Here it says, the Pope captures hearts in Mexico as millions listen. There he is. Captures hearts. Now, here we have his most recent visit was to St. Louis, Missouri. Youthful mobs greet Pope with enthusiastic roar. The Pope, by the way, just recently has been to St. Louis, Missouri. There, even Mark McGuire, who broke Babe Ruth's home run record, bowed down and kissed the Pope's ring. I have a picture of that in my files as well. Here we, it says, youthful mobs greet Pope with enthusiastic roar. 22,000 screaming young people swarm to see religious leader in St. Louis. He went to New York, New Jersey as well. He met with Bill Clinton, naturally. Here it says in St. Louis that Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts carried a flag symbolizing many nations, friend. What this is is a butchering of the U.S. flag. Look at that. There's the sun god symbol. There's the crescent moon of witchcraft and the Islamic religion superimposed on the United States flag. Oh, quite interesting, isn't it? What the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts did for the Pope. Here we see in USA Today, it says, Pope awes St. Louis faithful. Amazing. Here's a very interesting article. This is, oh, Time Magazine. And tells about his meeting in St. Louis and how uh, millions of Americans were absolutely thrilled out of their minds. Here's a uh, mother and a father that brought their entire family to see the Pope. Betty Rattage is her name. I'd like to quote this Catholic woman. I think you'll get the message here. She states, quote, the Pope, now this is again, 